everyone and welcome to a new video. Today, for the first time in my life, I have woken up in the mood to make a pair of pants. But not just any pants, a pair of very weird puffed, pained, asymmetrical silk and wool renaissance hose. I think they are probably called hose. Men's pants were usually called hose during this period, if I recall correctly. I honestly don't know that much about men's fashion, especially men's fashion from the Renaissance era, and I'm not going to be constructing a particularly accurate pair of pants. These are just so weird and delightful looking that I want to try and create something that looks similar, even if it's not made using a similar technique. The pants in question are inspired by a pair from the first book of fashion which is a book that has dozens of paintings that were commissioned throughout a father and son's lifetime. And they show all of the ridiculous and fantastic clothing that they wore and all of these unusual but absolutely amazing garments that they owned. Sorry, my dog is not as excited about making this pair of pants as I am. Now, I'm not going to try and make an exact replica of this pair. I don't have materials that mimic it perfectly. And there are some little changes I would like to make to it as well. So I've come up with my own sketch and I've also come up with a pattern. At least I hope it will function as a pattern. As we've already established, I don't have a lot of experience with making pants and these are very very weird pants but let's hope that it works. I'm making this entirely from fabrics from my stash so I have this really cool dupioni with varying colors of gray one centimeter wide stripes. I also have this wool which I'm going to be using in conjunction with it and I think they look pretty nice together. And then I also have this embroidered ribbon which I may be using to jazz it up a bit. I'm probably going to use some different materials for the jacket or the doublet or whatever I end up pairing with this but I haven't even finalized a design for that yet. Right now we are purely focusing on the pants. So as far as the pattern goes, it was mostly self-drafted, but since I don't have a ton of experience with pants, I did start out with this simplicity pattern from the 70s. I just cut out one of the high-waisted shorter versions of this, which did not end up fitting me at all. So I made some additions to it, and then I shortened it some more until it pretty much followed the lines of my underwear. After that was done, I laid it out flat, and I just traced the leg line onto my fabric, and then measured about 30 inches away from that edge, and cut out a rectangular piece of fabric, and pinned it onto the bottom edge of the shorts underwear looking thing. Then I trimmed and tailored that pant leg rectangle thing that I had cut out down until it resembled the shape I wanted. I'll show you these patterns in more detail when it comes to cutting them out, but I have a few different patterns. I have the poofy pattern for the leg with the vertical paned sections. I have the lining for that leg, and then I have the lining portion for the one with the horizontal banded details, and the puff section of that are going to be created out of rectangles that are gathered down. I'm going to get everything laid out and start getting stuff cut out. You can tell I'm taking this project seriously because I painted my nails to match it. So at last night I got everything cut out. Uh, even though I said I woke up feeling like you want to work on that project. I had some other commitments so I didn't end up starting on it until relatively late in the evening. With my current dog situation it's sort of difficult to go back to work in the evenings. But I managed to get everything cut out so I thought I would take you through that and then get started on actually constructing it. So we have what I'm calling the horizontal leg and then what I'm calling the vertical leg and I think I'm going to start on the horizontal leg first. It's more fiddly but the construction is similar to paint sleeves or puffed sleeves which I've done before. So I don't know how this would be historically constructed I could research that more, but right now I'm just trying to achieve something that looks similar. So I have a relatively fitted lining that I've drafted, and then I've marked the placement of the poofs onto the lining, or onto the pattern rather, and then I cut this out of my lining, which is a very lightweight gray cotton. This is actually part of a Hanel Ikea curtain set that I've had for ages, so I thought this would work really well for the chemise to go underneath this, because it's the same sort of gray tone, and then also work really well for lining as well, since I have enough of it to do that. This looks Looks like it would be an easy fabric to match, but it's actually sort of a very cool toned gray. Most of what I have in my stash leans too warm or is too purpley, so I'm sort of limited on the fabrics that will go with it, and this matches really nicely. So I'm using that for the lining, and this fabric is actually thin enough uh, and lightweight enough that I can lay it on top of my tissue paper pattern and just trace the guidelines through it and onto the fabric, which will be really convenient. Then I'm going to gather these strips down at each edge and sew them between those guidelines to create individual little poofs. And I went through and figured out what each strip need to be gathered down to, or sorry, not gathered down to, what the width each strip need to be cut to, because I don't want my strip to just be the same width as these bands, because that's not going to have any volume to it. So what I did is I actually took the soft ruler, and I measured between those two bands until I got the amount of puffing in the soft ruler that I wanted, and then I wrote that down. These three bands are going to be four and a half inch strips, and then this bottom one is going to be a five and a half 
inch strip. And I measured out how long I need each of those strips to be after they were gathered down. And then I just multiplied that measurement by three so they can be gathered down to a third of their length to be nice and adequately poofy. And then I got all of those strips cut out over here, though I have not labeled them yet, so that's something I'm definitely going to have to do. As for the top part, I'm going to have each part made out of a different material. So one half will be striped and one half will be wool. So I've just cut uh, this pattern out of two pieces of wool and two pieces of silk. I'm going to line the silk side with the wool and I'm going to line the wool side with the silk just so both sides are the same weight and will have the same approximate drape to them. So those are all of the components for the poofy horizontal leg except for the banded details that will go between each poof. And those will be made out of wool and topped with the lace, but that will be easy to cut out later on. Then over here I have everything for the horizontal leg, and maybe I'll just lay that out and show it to you as well while I'm at it. So this leg is going to have its silk paint portions and a solid wool lining. Since those paint portions are going vertically on the leg, I cut them so the stripes will be going vertically. So I cut out a whole bunch of these strips, and I want each paint portion to be three pieces of silk wide. They will be sewn as tubes and then turned right side out. So I cut them to be six strips wide, so that is the width I want doubled, and then I'm going to use a single stripe on either side for one centimeter wide seam allowance. This is cut from lining and this is a relatively fitted pants pattern but not quite as fitted as the one the puffed pieces are being laid on top of. Though they were all drafted from the same starting pattern so they should have a similar shape despite being slightly different fits. And this pattern is going to be what the lining is cut from. It's also serving as a guide for where the paint portions will be. So I have plotted out where the tops and bottoms of each strip are going to be. And I'm also going to use this as a guide for cutting the strips to the correct length as well as the position of them. You can see it has a dart at the side and at the leg to offer some shaping. So this is the lining lining for that leg, um, but the actual lining layer that you see underneath the paint portion is cut out of wool and it's much wider because it is going to be gathered down to create that sort of flouncy effect. So what I actually did to create this is I just traced a, another copy of the lining pattern I just showed you onto tissue paper, or tracing paper rather. The difference was that I slashed that in two places on both sides, so four places in total, and then I added three and a half inch wide extension at those points and this was cut out of the wool as I said and this will use the same upper sort of underwearish looking pattern that I drafted earlier based on that 1970s pattern. So that is everything all nice and cut out and the first step for that is transferring the puff placement onto the cotton lining and then sewing up the side seam of those pieces. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I have had a very productive hour and a half. I got the puff placement marked on the lining for the horizontal panel, and then I sewed those two pieces together with a three quarter inch allowance down the side edge. I also went through and measured all of my strips and cut them down to be exactly three times the width of the portion they will cover. And then I backstitched at one end and sewed a half inch away from each edge using a relatively long stitch length and leaving my thread tails long at one end. And then I can just pull on those thread tails and gather the material down. And once it is gathered down to the correct length, it is pinned to the bottom of that appropriate puff. That edge is sewn down, then the top edge is gathered down, pinned, and that is sewn down as well. In addition to doing all of this, I have also sewn all of my little paint portions for the vertical leg, and I just folded these with the right sides facing each other and stitched a centimeter away from the raw edges. Then I used a method I detailed in my last vlog uh, to turn them right side out the way I do with all tubes, and I just do that using a very large needle and a piece of cord. The cord is tied off at one end of the tube and then the needle is threaded through the tube all the way through the other end and then you can just pull on the cord and it will turn itself right side out. So I did that for all of the tubes and now they just need to be pressed. So this is how they look freshly turned right side out and this is the one that I have ironed. So I have nine or ten more of those to do this process with. I threw and marked the paint panel portions onto the cotton lining which is what you see right here. So now that that's marked I can go ahead and sew up the darts in this uh, to form it into a pant leg. I also have it the lining piece for the paint portion that will go over top which has a bit more volume to it. The more I was looking at this the more just drab it looked in comparison to the other leg which is made mostly out of silk and will have bands made out of this lace going horizontally across it. I want to incorporate some of that trim into the bodice and I only had eight yards of it. I need quite a few yards to go between the puffed portions but I did have enough that I decided to just add a few rows of it onto this layer that you will kind of see through the silk panes that go over 
top of it. I also went through and added a whole bunch of strips of this metallic silver mesh sort of thing that I have going on because I thought that would add a little bit more texture to it as well as well as some interest and a bit of sparkle which is reminiscent of this. So now I can go ahead and gather down the top edge, uh, sew up the darts and then gather down the bottom edge and then I'm just going to match those darts up and the bottom and top edges up with the lining layer or the cotton lining layer. We're working with like two separate lining layers here, uh, but hopefully that makes sense. And then I can start adding the panes atop it. The panes are basically just the strips uh, that will go over top of it that look almost like a window pane. I showed the process of cutting these out earlier and also what they looked like right after they've been turned right side out. Uh, and at that point I had one pressed and now I have them all pressed. So they're just hanging out over here on my tripod in front of my unicorn. So after the wool lining is gathered and sewn atop the cotton lining, I can start getting these positioned on top of both of them making sure they line up with the markings on the cotton lining layer. Okay, so I went through and gathered the wool layer with all of the ribbons and mesh attached to it down to match the top and bottom measurements of the cotton lining. And then I just aligned the edges and the seams and got them sewn together. So the next step is going to be pulling out the cotton lining pattern and using that as a guide to cut all of the paned strips that will go atop this. And then I can just match them up with the markings I've already added to the fabric. So all of these strips have been cut to the right length and I actually have two strips that I didn't even have to cut into. So that worked out fantastic. Looking at this now, there are a couple that are slightly too long, so I'm going to trim those, but for the most part they are all cut, and then I've just labeled the top edge so I know what order they go in, and now I just have to get them pinned on to the top and bottom edges of that pant leg. I sort of forgot to film, but all of the paint portions were pinned onto the edges of the wool lining, and then basted on, and then I actually sewed up the inseam as well. Uh, while I was at that, I also got the remaining puff gathered down just by pulling on those threads I sewed with one end left loose and once it was gathered down to the right length I sewed on the bottom edge then I gathered the top edge and sewed it down as well leaving me with this. Off camera I went ahead and made a one inch wide tube of wool which I'm just going to top stitch between each of these puffs and then on top of that I'm going to sew on some lace. So that's why I get to spend the next half hour or so doing. So I didn't film it, but I sewed up the inseam of the upper portion, and I sewed the outer and the inner layer of the upper portion together around the top edge, as well as around the slash at the front, and I will try and show that in more detail later. But I did go ahead and sew the leg with the vertical bands on. I sewed it on using a three-quarter inch allowance, and I just stitched a quarter inch away from that first line of stitching, and I'm going to use pinking shears to cut off the excess seam allowance relatively close to that second line of stitching. I also got most of the wool bands sewn on between the puffed portions on the horizontal layer. So now I get to go through with my lace trim and just top stitch that on top. I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to do that by hand or by machine, and I'm leaning towards machine. And once that's done, I can do up the inner leg seam of this as well and get that sewn on to the upper portion. And then I will have something resembling a pair of pants, which will be very exciting. So all the trim is on this leg, and I just went through and pinned and then sewed up the side seam, and I made sure to match all of the bands of ribbon uh, so they would line up when the seam was sewn and I think I did a pretty decent job. So I sewed this the same way I sewed the pant leg um, onto the upper portion. So just with a three quarter inch allowance and then another line of stitching a quarter inch away from that. And then I'm just going to trim this down with pinking. My camera rudely ran out of batteries though I probably deserved it because it's been flashing red for like half this video. <laughs> I've just been hoping it won't automatically turn off. Uh, but basically I don't want to add any additional bulk to the inseam just because that can get uncomfortable and this is already pretty thick given how much material was required to make this look adequately poofy. So I don't want to add anything to make it thicker, so I'm just going to trim it and hopefully it won't fray too much. It's not like I'm going to be wearing these frequently enough that I'm worried about the uh, edges fraying and breaking down. Now both legs are sewn on. I just tried them on before clipping off the excess seam allowance, and I'm going to be honest, they look a little silly. And I know you're probably thinking, we knew they were going to look silly, they're ridiculous renaissance pants. But just the shape of the upper portion is a little too shorts-like, and it just looks awkward where the legs start. So I think I want to add a poofy panel to make the upper portion look narrower. And I also want to do contrasting kind of puffs at the bottom edge. So on the side with the horizontal puffs, I'm going to have vertical paned details. Then the side with the vertical paned details, I'm going to have a horizontal one that is finished with the embroidered mesh ribbon that I have left over. And I'm thinking I'm going to do the same thing up here. So on this side, I will have a paned portion with silver mesh lining to incorporate some of the silver I used on this 
piece. And then on this side, I'm going to have a horizontal sort of ruched puffy detail, and then it will finish off the top edge with more of that embroidered ribbon. So I just cut out a piece of scrap cotton following the bottom edge of this pattern for the upper portion, and I pinned that in place. And then while that was on, I just traced out the lines I want this upper puffed portion to follow. So now I have to turn that into a pattern and figure out what the lining for both sides are going to look like, because I want a puffed lining, which means it has to be uh, wider than the actual pattern that will serve as a base for it. Also, I have to figure out the measurements because for them to be the same width, this side actually has to be narrower because it's going to have the wider ribbon around the top edge. And then both of them are going to have this trim around the bottom, which I actually used for another Renaissance project a while back, uh, just because I need something to finish off that edge since it'll be too puffy to fold inward and make it look neatly finished that way. This is more work than I was hoping to have to invest into these pants, but we're going to get it done to get these looking good. And more poofy and ridiculous, but also more nicely proportioned and less ridiculous at the same time. I'm sure that makes complete and total sense. I went ahead and got the upper portions cut out. So now I just need to cut out the strips for those, get those gathered down and sewn on, and then I can move forward with getting these sewn on to the actual upper portion and hopefully have something that resembles a little bit more what I had envisioned. All right, so I finished the upper puffed portions and now I just have to figure out how to sew these on with the already mostly assembled pants, which will be interesting. And then after they're sewn on, I'm going to trim both edges with the various trimmings. Yeah, wish me uh, good luck with this. It'll be an interesting thing to try and pin, I'm sure. That was very fiddly to do, but I ended up aligning the ends of the little puffed portions with the inseam. And then I pinned it so the right sides were facing each other, and I pinned it right here. And then I sewed a half inch away from the raw edge of the puff portion, and then flipped it upward and just top stitched the top edge down. And I'd previously turned that edge inward um, prior to sewing the other edge on. So that was pretty easy to do. And now this edge is just going to be covered with the remainders of that organza lace ribbon. So it's going to extend, I think, a half inch onto the puff portion and a half inch beyond it. And I need to sew down the outer edge first because the outer edge is going to be longer since it is a curve, uh, and then I will ease the bottom edge to prevent any wrinkles and get that sewn down as well. I've also created the little puffs for the bottom, but I obviously still have some threads to clip, so I will insert some footage of doing this. I basically constructed it the same way I did the puffs up here. It's just with rectangles, so it's a little bit easier. So this one has mesh lining that was gathered down over top of the wool suiting, and then it has little paint portions, and then the bottom edges were just turned inward and then I top stitched ribbon over them, which is going to form a tie, so I can get a nice tight fit around the leg. And then on the other side, it is the reverse, so it is that uh, gathered striped silk material to mimic the puff portion on that leg as well. So yeah, just have some trim to sew on, and then I think there's some eyelets to sew in the top edge, but it should be done, uh, which will be very exciting. This come together surprisingly quickly, given how bizarre it is and how outside my comfort zone it is. Guys, I think they're done. I got the trim sewn on. I also opted to sew on this little vertical piece of trim just because I ended up sewing on some bands of embroidered ribbon to the wool lining of the vertical layer. And I actually really hate how it looks. It sticks out really obviously between the paint portions since there's kind of a gap right there. So I decided to just make it an asymmetrical detail and make it look like it's continuous onto the waistband. Actually, I take back what I said about this being done because it still needs closures. And it's actually a little bit large at the top edge. It fits relatively snugly through here, but it's a bit loose at the top. So I'm either going to turn this edge inward by like a half inch at the very top, or I'm going to add some sort of buckle detail at the center back so I can cinch it in a little bit more. All right, so it's been a day and I am now tackling the eyelets. So what I've actually done is I've tacked like the top inch at the very top edge inward, and now I'm going to whip stitch it closed. I still have found that it's slightly loose in the waist, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew eyelets about two inches away from either side of the back uh, center back seam, and then I can pull the fabric using a tie between those two eyelets to alter the fit somewhat. So now it's just time to mark and actually sew the eyelets and I think I'm going to carry on the asymmetry and use two different colors of thread. I think I'm going to use the dark thread on that side and the light thread on that side and then that'll just be another sort of interesting element to it. And then I have to go through and trim threads and then it will be done. Um, I say that like this is going to be a very fast process but it takes me like 
five minutes to sew an eyelet. Probably more, actually, because I'm a bit out of practice. It's been a few months since I've sewn any. And since I don't want the fabric to gape here, and it's not particularly sturdy fabric that will cinch in on its own, I'm going to have to place the eyelets pretty close together. So it'll be a bit. Actually, before I sew the eyelets, I've decided to sew in a little facing to both sides. So originally when I was doing this, I was going to line the silk side with the wool and the wool side with the silk, so they would be the same thickness. And then the eyelets and the drape would be symmetrical on both sides. But I didn't want any of the wool to show through around the edges of the silk and vice versa, so I decided to line them with the coordinating fabric. But that means that the silk side is much lighter than the wool side, and that has its drawbacks when it comes to actually wearing them, but it's going to have further drawbacks when it comes to the eyelets. Um, because the eyelets, you're pulling the thread and putting tension on the material, the thickness of the material will kind of dictate how large the eyelets are. And I want the eyelets to be symmetrical on both sides, even though they're going to be different colors. So I've just made a strip of the coordinating fabrics and turned the edges inward, and then I've added another narrower strip of the same material inside of that. So there are two layers of silk on this side and two layers of wool on this side. I'm going to whip stitch the edges of those down and then both sides will have the same thickness and density of material and hopefully the eyelets will end up looking really similar. All right guys, all the eyelets are done. There's only a little bit of blood on the interior from where my very out of practice fingers got pricked. I also just went ahead and turned a narrow strip of silk into a tube and then turned it right side out and that is going to function as lacing and since the lacing is a little bit thicker, it sort of hides the gap between the pieces and prevents me from having to use a modesty panel. So I sewed a couple eyelets in the back and I sewed in a little lining for them just like I did with the front so the thickness of the material would be correct on both sides and I marked the placement on the front too close together for them to actually hit the lining layers. So now there's a little mark and I end up sewing the eyelets past that mark, but it's fine. I can just use these ties to cinch in the top of the waistband even further. With all of my eyelets done, I think I'm going to put on some socks, put on some shoes, and pop these on so I can get some worn photos. They will probably be worn photos from the waist down, uh, just because I don't really have anything to pair with this yet, but I am quite eager to get the video up about these, so I don't think I'll be waiting until the rest of the ensemble is finished. I have some worn photos of these pants to share with all of you and that is going to be pretty much it for this video. I think it was a very successful video. I definitely enjoyed filming it and I really enjoy the end product too. I think these pants are just a delight and they're so much fun to look at and to wear and they just bring me a great amount of joy and I hope they bring you a great amount of joy too. Now that I successfully made one pair of these I want to make them in so many different colors and recreate so many different things from this book because they really do just make me smile and I think it's really fantastic when you can work on something that makes you feel that way. I think part of the reason I'm so satisfied is because these came together remarkably quickly. They were my main project for about two days, and then I sewed the eyelets on the third day, and then they were done. Uh, despite being something quite complicated and quite outside my comfort zone, I didn't really run into any issues with the pattern or with the project, which made it all the more enjoyable. I hope you guys had fun watching this one too, and if you'd like to see me make something to go with these pants, because in these photos I've just paired them with a tank top, then subscribe and stay tuned because I'm definitely going to do that, and I'd love to film the process of that as well. Also, if you want to give this video a comment and a like, that really helps me out, and I will talk to all of you very soon.